A fresh breeze is blowing through the luxury SUV segment with the debut of Maserati's Levante, named after a wind that can change from gentle to gale force strength in an instant. Joining us to talk about this exciting debut is Maserati CEO Harold Vester. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to New York. Thank you, Shelley. So first, let's talk about your new beauty. I mean, we can assume this car is fast. I've seen some of the video. I've heard some of the noises it makes. It looks incredible. What sets it apart from other SUVs, though? Well, being 100% Maserati and 100% SUV. And 100% Maserati means all what the people may know or may not know, starting, let's say, breathtaking Italian design, unique, refined finish, um, handcrafted materials for superior touch and feel. Uh, we are offering, in the meantime, on our entire range of cars, as the only car company in the world, we are offering a mix of 100% silk, together with, with Zenia, um, wood and leather. Where, where can you spoil yourself or your passengers in such an environment? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a gorgeous looking car. Uh, you are also, with this car, looking to increase global sales, global production. How do you strike a balance between um, selling something I don't want to say to the masses, but selling more cars to an audience that really values exclusivity. No, I, I totally agree. Look, luxury is directly connected to something which is rare. No? This, is, this, is, this is clear. But um, if you consider that today, globally, uh, we produce close to 90 million cars a year. No? Wow. Um, Maserati sold over the last two years more or less flat uh, retails to final customers were in the range of 32,000. The, the Levante will give us a significant growth. We are planning to sell 30,000 a year, a third of, of this in, uh, in, in the United States, which will bring us to 60, slightly over 60,000. Compared to 99 million, it's still a drop in the ocean. There is no risk at all that tomorrow or in a year when you are leaving leaving your house in New York, you will see you will see a crowded place full of Maseratis. Unfortunately, will not be the case. <laughs> right, unfortunately. Now, Sergio Marchioni, the, the CEO of Fiat Chrysler, has said he foresees gas prices to remain low, and he's forecasting a permanent shift to SUVs and pickup trucks. How do you respond to that? Do you have any other plans in the pipeline, or do you, do you foresee building bigger cars, more no, bigger cars in no. the future? No, we are, we are part of the group, and obviously we are, we are uh, totally, totally aligned to this. I would say this is pretty much true for the mainstream mass market in the United States. It's true for large SUVs, full-size SUVs, for pickup trucks. And I know that you Americans, you love this stuff. Of course we do. But, love um, our cars. But I think, uh, let's say, the Maseratis of the world, they were ruled by different um, rules and regulations. Now, one thing I've heard you say is we didn't build an SUV, we built a Maserati. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, um, I, could talk, I could talk for an infinite amount of time about all the technical goodies, starting from a V6 twin turbo Ferrari engine, which is in this car, and so on. But Maserati, we have, it's over 100 years of history. We have a lot of stuff which you can buy for money. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, a fan of, of Maya Angelou. I'm sure you, you know her. And, and yes. she said, um, I have learned that um, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. And this is also what Maserati stands for. You need you need to try it. You need to, to perceive yourself how this machine makes you feel. It's a feeling, right? Yes. Moving towards the future, some of your competitors have really embraced autonomous cars, these self-driving cars. Where do you stand on that? And uh, do you see a shift in the way that cars will be manufactured? Yeah, I'm, it, and it, it, it might surprise. I'm very positive about this. Um, why? Why am I? Because we all live day by day if we use car to go to work or to, to visit the family or whatsoever. We, we experience this each and every day that there are many, many situations where you're not really driving. No, it seems to be a, a, a kind of a sequence of, of parking slightly interrupted by moving a couple of meters forward. And I believe for any type of car company, also for a sporty or luxury, a performance oriented car company, these, these steps into autonomous driving will help 
us and our customers to increase the quality of our life. Why don't you let the car do the job um, when you are driving around in, in such a situation and, and get some more quality time into your life? This is one part of the equation. The other part of the equation from my point of view is, and when then you finally can drive, you will even more appreciate the uh -huh. dynamics and the, and the capabilities of, of our wonderful cars. So you say there will always be a need to get behind the wheel. Yes. Uh, go fast, hear those engines roar, drive a beautiful car. Exactly. All right, so when, tell, last but not least, tell us when we can buy these cars. Well, we, start, we started production at the end of February. We will deliver the first cars in Europe at the end of April, early May. Um, but last but at least you're interested in what's going, what's going on here. We'll start produce for the United States, for the, for the market here in June, and I expect first cars to be handed over to final customers in September. All right. Well, Harold Vester, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you.